came about um, and how you got interested specifically in Uganda and, and working in this this uh, in the park and those types of things, just kind of the formation of it. Well, we've been working in Uganda, I guess, now for uh, 20 years. Mm -hmm. And how that came about is just we applied for a number of different postdocs mm -hmm. and we were fortunate enough to get two that basically took us to Uganda. Okay. Um, and how the clinic came about is really we kind of got to know the community mm -hmm. because you know, the community is just, well, you know, 50 meters from the gate, outside of the gate, so we get to know them really well. Sure. And um, you know, we thought, was there something we could kind of do for the community? Mm -hmm. And you know, you know, talking to the community, they always say what they want is they want jobs, mm -hmm. but you can't employ very many people. Right. So this was kind of a, um, a second idea that came about. And it only became possible because of Dr. John Geddes, who mm -hmm. comes over to Africa with uh, all the McGill students in the Canadian Field Studies in Africa program. Mm -hmm. He basically said that he would, you know, do all the kind of medical advice that was needed. Okay. So we kind of had a, a team of people that then could just make it happen. Okay. Interesting. Um, how, and then I guess both of your research is, is fairly different, but how did you get interested in, say, working in Africa or in the continent of Africa? for your own research? Um, well, I can speak to that first. So I work primarily on, on aquatic systems, rivers and lakes right. and swamps, and I, um, on fish ecology and physiology and conservation. And when I went over to Africa, I was very interested in studying um, fish ecology and fisheries in the enormous wetlands that um, are very important ecological habitats in that region. Wetlands cover about a sixth of Uganda, so that particular area was very uh, useful and interesting. Uh, and there has been, there had been very little work done on the actual biology of fishes in those habitats. Okay. Interesting. Okay. And, and you? Uh, just <coughs> Basically, it's kind of a bit, in some senses, the opposite. Okay. You know, Kibale was a place um, where a lot of work had been done on primates okay. because it has the highest biomass of primates ever recorded in the world. Huh. So it was a, kind of an opportunity to go over there and kind of work at a really great site where there's lots of different uh, monkey species around. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, this is kind of a general question now about the Kabali project. I mean, what do you think is the most important thing for people uh, to know about it who are coming to it fresh and who may not know that it exists? Do you mean the project per se, or the uh, or the work you do, or the or clinic, the, or the clinic, particular. perhaps? I mean, whichever you think is most important. I mean, I, I obviously I think the actual work that's being done is, is really important. So, uh, I would say that um, that one thing that we both try to stress in our research is application to either conservation or management. Okay. And um, Kibala National Park is um, an amazing rainforest, mid-altitude rainforest park. Um, that represents one of the remaining islands of that kind of habitat in East Africa. So it's a, I think it, it is a very valuable natural resource for Uganda. And um, I think it's nice for people to, to have that perspective when they're thinking about um, how the clinic relates to both the park and the people around the park. Sure. Can I add to that? Sure, I guess a little bit. I think you know, part of the idea is that, you know, the people are kind of denied resources because of the park. Sure. Um, they've claimed everything else outside of the park, and it's very little left in many ways of this type of habitat. But, you know, we want to kind of, in some senses, give something back to the local people. Right. And the clinic is one way of doing that. Right. So the local people simply pay for the cost of the treatment. So, right. like, if they need malaria drugs, they just pay for the cost of replacing those drugs. Okay. Everything else is basically covered by the project. Okay, great. And the idea is that, you know, they'll see the clinic as being something that is coming from the park. So the chief warden, for instance, is the kind of the head of the board who runs the, the health center. Right. Um, so they'll be seen as kind of coming from the park and hopefully sure. giving back a little bit and improving the park to people relationships. Sure. In your own work, I mean, how much interaction do you have with, say, the local village and the local people? I mean, do they help you as far as being guides or in your research? Or I know you said you can't <coughs> employ too many people, but I'm just kind of curious more about what your, your interaction is with the community. You know, well, in many ways we work with uh, kind of a group of uh, men and uh, women who work as field assistants. Okay. And they go out with us kind of every day um, and we kind of do expeditions to collect fish, 
or we're watching monkeys. So we're working with them kind of day in and day out. We have a group of, of folks that we work with um, from the nearby villages around our base camp, which is in Kibali. Mm -hmm. And some of them we have worked with for um, about 18 years, 15, 18 years. Mm -hmm. So we sort of grow it up together in this system and we know their families very well and so on. So we work very closely with some um, groups in particular and then and a, particularly in the context of Collins projects, because they're site they're site based, and right. you need to be following monkeys over a long period. And then in um, in uh, the work that we do on fishes, I work all over the place, inside and outside the parks, because we're working on fish and fisheries. Sure. So we work very closely with fishermen wherever we go, with the and always checking in with the local council representatives. But the fishermen are incredibly knowledgeable, and um, right. and we work uh, with fishermen in different contexts all over the country. And, and uh, again, and this is more just my own interest, I suppose, than <laughs> not really, but I mean, and uh, they're really, uh, are they by and large just very uh, willing to help and interested in your research, or is it, I mean, I'm just kind of curious too about that, like, I mean, you come up to them and say, like, you know, can I you we pick always, your brain? Can yeah, I, uh, <laughs> you have to be very sensitive about um, about going into a host country sure. and working with the indigenous people. We, um, uh, when we're working in a new area, so if we're on an expedition, a fishing survey to a new area, we uh, always go with colleagues, Ugandan colleagues from the National Fisheries Institute. And together, um, if we work with fishermen, um, there's a process that we go through. We always check in with the local council chief, so to speak, okay. and then um, once that's been okayed, we uh, will go up and we'll, and we'll talk to fishermen and explain what we're doing and see if any of them are interested. And most of them are usually very curious and would like to tell us um, problems with their fishery because they would like us to help fix them okay. and willing to help for mm -hmm. sure and they you know, get paid a stipend for that. Sure. In Kibali, it's one of the ones that have worked with us for a long time now, really have become um, experts in what they do. Sure. And yeah. so, like, you know, I remember teaching uh, a guy called Tusimi basically tree identification and then, you know, I went back to, you know, came back to North America and he kept the books and kept learning them and you know, he's now teaching me and he's, you know, really good at it. Huh. And some of the other field assistants will tell, say, well, no, I think we should do it this way now right. because they just have a lot they of experience the system, right? Right. and they're really proud of what they do. Sure. Great. Um, Again, kind of more in a global picture, uh, what do you hope this project accomplishes? Uh, maybe both in the short term, uh, what you can do now. I know it's really only been up and running for a couple of years now, uh, or since kind of 2008, I guess, was when the clinic was finished. Um, and, uh, you know, and then in the long term, what you hope it does. Well, we kind of view it as a, in some senses, uh, as a potential model for mm -hmm. conservation. Okay. So it's kind of uh, bri bridging conservation and public health. So it's something that's relatively easy, right. yeah, it's a lot of work, not really hard, but it's relatively easy to give to a community. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, if it works that they kind of uh, get along better with the park and it improves conservation relationships between park and people, sure. it could be a way of kind of um, you know, helping the local communities in parks kind of anywhere sure. and also kind of helping uh, the parks, you know, decreasing Ill illegal activities or something right. like that. This is the first clinic in Uganda that is set up. Um, in, it's not. It's inside the park gate and in collaboration with the Uganda Wildlife Authority. Um, and uh, it, it's really important because the the people who live right adjacent to the national park suffer a lot in terms of crop raiding sure. by elephants and monkeys, and and they have very legitimate concerns about the park being there. Sure. Um, not in so much as access to the resources, but rather what the, the problems associated with crop rating are the main thing. Okay. Um, you can imagine if you have a, a small, you know, uh, field that's going to the size of this building, right. and, you know, heard of ten elephants walk through it, right. there's not a lot can't, left. Yeah, you can't do anything so, about it. Yeah. Right. So, so it's a, uh, and, and we certainly looked into, for, into uh, what, the, what the folks around the park were interested in, and, and as Colin said, um, they're really concerned about access to medical care um, because it's far away mm -hmm. and it's expensive. And so sure. we provide a medical center that's closer and then by offsetting the cost so they don't have to pay for the consultation fee, um, there's a benefit to it. Okay. And a big component of the health center as well is education. Right. So there's one of the nurses goes out to the local schools and you know, talks about things like hygiene and kind of uh, things like that. Um, also, we've been trying to get uh, bed nets, uh, protection sure. from mosquitoes and malaria. Right. 